All right, guys, here's a here's the video I said I'd put together for replacing the uh, bolt buffer inside the receiver. Um, I think one or two people asked about. It's not real bad. I did some of the disassembly up front or, you know, kind of loosen things up so I could, you know, make the uh, video a little bit faster. I don't want to spend three hours editing. I spend about five minutes. I do all this on my phone. So, anyways... Give you a rundown of what you need. Um, you want like a small, small hammer. I use a little brass hammer. I think it's like a two ounce. Um, the biggest punch that you can find that fits the back of the uh, bolt buffer itself. This is a 530 seconds. Uh, I think a quarter inch would probably be a little bit better. Actually, no, not probably not a quarter inch. I think it's maybe three sixteenths, but whatever. This will this will work just fine. You'll see what I'm saying. Um, you'll want a standard number two Phillips head. Um, if you have a sure cycle system like me, you will need a half inch on like a three inch extension. If you have the sure cycle, you also need a seven sixteenths wrench. If you have the factory, uh, buffer assembly in and you need to take the stock off you're gonna need a five millimeter I believe there's a Japanese gun so most stuff should be metric unless it's the sure cycle system which you guys will see in a second um, and I will explain there's some slight differences if you're working with the sure cycle system or the uh, OEM system and uh, so let's get to it so you're just gonna break the gun down I've got the action open already um, I have the uh, pad off already. Uh, the reason I have grease here is I always tell, put a little bit of grease where you're putting the screwdriver and put a little bit on the tip of the screwdriver. That'll help you not booger up the recoil pad because it's a real tight fit. Put that off to the side. Just quick break the gun down. A little bit of noise in the background because I got a 3D printer running at the moment. I'll use that same punch and brass hammer to push out the trigger group pin. I always keep this on safe so I don't dry fire it. Um, and then this groove here is what you'll use to take pressure off of the buffer assembly. So I think it was the American Arms Channel that showed me that trick. So you just, I believe it, it's kind of tough to do on the camera, but yep, slides right out. And that's when you need that dingus to come loose. Don't forget to pull your bolt handle out. And I'm gonna do a second video right after this one showing you how to adjust the trigger on your um, gold assembly, take out some of the uh, over travel and pre travel. Take the bolt out. Um, and then the next part is so I've already loosened the, oh, that was the magazine plug. It's not held in with anything. This is where you use your half inch. Now, funny about this system, they everything's stainless on it except the the nut and bolt and washer. It's just generic steel, so I would keep some anti-seize on that. Take your stock off. 
Like I said, it'd be no different if you had that. It's just, it's held in with a long bolt that's threaded in the back. And if any of you guys still have this system and you want to take the buffer out, um, the bolt, that's like not actually the, the buffer that I'm going to be showing. I guess this would be like a buffer assembly, kind of uh, for recoil, reminds you of like a, an AR-15. There's just two roll pins in here. You've got to punch one out first and then drop it through that hole that's threaded. So you punch one out, drop a pin through, punch the other one out, and then you can thread that off with like a big flathead or something like that. That that's, system works, but if it gets any sort of moisture in it, which it's going to if you hunt ducks or you hunt inclement weather, uh, it just gets rusty. And I had to service it twice in a season. That's just, that's too much damn work for me. Um, I already have this loosened up, so I'll spin it off. And this is the uh, Shore Cycle system. A couple things you want to be cognizant of. Um, you pull this off. There's a little pin in there, and that'll fall out if you're not paying attention. So, And it fits down in that recess. Now, when I put my Shore Cycle on, I had to put a small bevel on the top side of this so it would clear these top of the threads right there but that's the sure cycle system it's all in one now it's pretty pretty good setup uh this part the buffer like where the dingus of the bolt interfaces it's uh, unfortunately that is still plastic but I haven't had any issues with it yet so put all that stuff aside. All right. So now this is the the buffer. Let me get a flashlight so I can show you this. That is the buffer right right in there. So you're going to punch it through that hole, that little half moon in the top right in there. So generally speaking, my understanding with these is when they start failing, they kind of fall apart. You're going to start malfunctioning and things like that. Um, I have not had that. This gun maybe has 500 plus rounds or so through it. Nothing real crazy. Although it is mostly my hand loads and none of my hand loads are running, you know, weak speed. So most everything is a little on the hotter side. Um, anyways, so the first thing I'd suggest that you do is you take, this is just a little bit of CLP. And I just put a little bit of oil around that to kind of help press it out. And you can see if you look in there, it kind of looks like an orange or an amber color. You're going to take your, your punch. Now you have to take your sure cycle system off because this is larger in diameter. And it will actually get hung up on it when you go to press it out. This one is a little less in diameter. I think you can push the, bu the buffer out without taking the whole assembly off. I do believe so. It's just I haven't done it since I put the sure cycle system in. So anyways... <laughs> You'll just hold the the punch right there with your finger and you tap, it just popped right out. Now mine probably came out a little bit easier because I've had this out before. But that's all the buffer is. It's a piece of uh urethane. And it's got a metal plate on it. And when you want to take that plate on. Now that's actually what interface with the back of the bolt. So right there. Um, anyways, you'll just need to, if it's already falling apart, you'll need to salvage a plate or possibly buy a new plate. Hopefully it's still together enough. You're just replacing a, you know, kind of worn buffer. Uh, but you'll have to press 
that little metal tab, you'll have to press that and push it out and put it into your new, it's like a brown or amberish color uh, urethane buffer. And in order to just put it back in, it's pretty simple. You just get it started, make sure this half moon shape, the half moon right in there, that it clears right inside where the uh, buffer will go, the uh, sure cycle buffer. Be a little tricky to get in, and then I just use my my hammer as soon as I can get it in the hole. Like I said, you'll want to make sure all that stuff's lined up in there. Let's see if I can. Get some light. Bet you got that all lined up, all of them. Um, half moons together. And it'll bottom out pretty easily. And that's it. That's it. So uh, that's all you got to do and then just reassemble the gun as you've uh, done before. Um, it is a pain in the butt with the sure cycle system. That part definitely stinks. Uh, but like I said, you know, you're, you're looking at a gun that's got 500 rounds on it of, you know, Magnum 10 gauge, and I have not had any issues yet, so I'm going to say it's probably not a real big deal. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. If you guys have any questions, um, feel free to post them down below.